Good day, Bermuda. I'm Jamila Lodge of the Bermuda Economic Development Corporation, and this is Mind Your Business, the show that brings you the latest information about starting and running a local business in Bermuda. Join us as we discuss the local business issues that are important to you. Today in the studio, I have Melanie Fullerton. She's an associate at Cox Hallett Wil Wilkinson Limited, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the formation of your company. So welcome, Melanie. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. No <laughs> problem. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, so yeah, before we get into that, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name's Melanie. I have an honors degree in geography and environmental science. Oh. I have a law degree and I also have my master's in law. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. I was called to the Bermuda Bar on the 31st of October 2014. Okay. And I'm currently a corporate associate at CHW. Excellent, excellent. So, as a corporate associate, what is your focus there? So, I'm in the corporate department, I'm a corporate attorney, so I deal with a wide range of commercial matters that our clients require us to, okay. to help them with. Okay. So because we're talking about business formation, would be incorporations and those kind of things something that fall yes, under your purview? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. So with Bermuda Economic Development Corporation, we deal a lot with um, small businesses. Mm -hmm. and. Oftentimes they come in and they ask us, well, how do I register my company? What's the difference between the sole proprietor and uh, LLC or LTD? So what different types of structures are there in terms of companies? Right, so there's several different types of corporate structures, but the most common tend to be your sole proprietorship, your general partnership, and then your limited partnership and your limited liability company. Okay, what are the difference between those things? So a sole proprietorship and a general partnership typically don't have a lot of registration requirements. Okay. And then when you get into the limited partnership and the limited liability company, there's more formal requirements that are required to register your company and uh, make it, you know, complete. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a person, I'm starting my own business, and it's just going to be me, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we get people to come in and say, oh, I want to register this business. So if I'm going to operate at a, as a sole proprietor, there's no need for me to really contact a law firm or register anywhere? No. Okay. So that's the most sort of informal structure. Right. Okay. So when do you need to hire CHW or another law firm to assist you with registration? All right. So once you, um, we always suggest that when you're ready to incorporate your company that you do engage the assistance of a corporate or commercial attorney okay. simply because they have the knowledge, expertise, and background to assist you with ensuring that you do have the correct corporate structure for your the type of business that you're proposing to have. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, you'd want to make sure that if you require any, any additional licenses to run that business or if there's any you know specific client needs that need to be catered to, that a corporate attorney would be aware of those. So we would always, always um, suggest that you come and speak to us about that once you're ready to incorporate. Okay. Um, what is the benefit of doing that? Like, you know, if, if I can operate as a sole proprietor and it doesn't cost me any money to do that, right? Te you know, technically. Right. Um, but whenever you hire a lawyer or a corporate service provider, I assume there's going to be fees associated with that. Right. So for a lot of startups, that can be the deciding factor mm -hmm. from whether Absolutely. they decide to do it or yeah. not, right? What should be the catalyst, you would say, to make someone say, okay, I need to do this versus I can operate as a sole proprietor for a period of time or something like that? Right. Well, the good thing about incorporating your business into a limited liability structure is that you ring fence your personal assets versus your company assets. Okay. And so should anything ever go wrong in your business, if you have a limited liability structure, um, only your company assets are at risk and not necessarily your personal assets. So that's yeah. the most important part. I see. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm, you know, operating and let's say someone wants to sue me for something, it was my fault, but <laughs> if they get um, it in their mind that it was and they wanted to sue me as a sole proprietor, my personal assets could be at Absolutely. risk. So anything registered in your name okay. as an individual. All right. So it could be your house, your car, oh. <laughs> anything that is in your personal name. Okay. Well, I mean... In some instances, liability associated with some business formations probably lower than in others. Are there any industries you would say that if someone is starting a business in that specific industry, you would recommend they probably consider either doing an LLC or LTD? Yeah, I think you have to look at the difference sort of between if you're um, incorporating a company that is more on the lower end of risk, so say like a graphic design okay, company right. versus 
you know, your, I believe, Extreme Sports was on previously. Yes. So that, you know, you have people participating in physical activity, and so the risk is genuinely higher. Right. So it, that's sort of the spectrum that you would look at. Okay. And where do you fit on that spectrum? And those are some of the conversations you would have with someone who might be considering? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So now, you mentioned two types <laughs> of incorporated or structured companies. So the LLC, right? Mm -hmm. And then the LTD. Yeah. What's the difference between those two? <laughs> Great question. So an LTD is incorporated under the Companies Act 1981 okay. and is typically a company limited by shares. Um, an LLC is a company that's incorporated under the Limited Liability Company Act 2016 and is sort of a hybrid structure between a limited liability company and a partnership. Okay. Additionally, the um, LTD requires that you advertise your intention to um, incorporate the entity and its governing documents are your certificate of for certificate of incorporation, okay. your memorandum of association, and the bylaws. Whereas an LLC, you do not have to advertise your intention to incorporate, and the governing documents are restricted to your certificate of formation and the LLC agreement. Okay. So there is quite a bit of difference there. So mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm just going through this. I'm thinking <laughs> maybe I'm a small business owner, and I'm like, that's a lot. Like yeah. all of those documents that govern, I'm just trying to sell, I don't know, cookies or whatever the case right. may be. I guess that goes back to what you had said earlier. You have to assess what the risk will be and all of that. But still, if I'm really, I'm set on like this is going to be a LLC or LTD, are there any things from a small business perspective that you think one formation would be better for? than another? Yeah, so as obviously the LLC um, legislation is new. Okay. Um, so we have, it's been interesting to work with entrepreneurs as they come in the door wanting to incorporate an LLC and actually digging into why exactly they want to do that. Is right. it because it's the new swag yeah. on the street? <laughs> or is it, you know, do they have legitimate reasons? Right. Um, to incorporate an LLC, it's obviously a bit faster because you don't have to wait for a legal notice to be posted right. in the Royal Gazette. Um, but additionally, we do see a lot of tech companies so if you're developing an app and wanting right. to register it on the iStore yeah. I've had numerous clients that are interested in going into that um, business and I think Apple might require that you have an LLC structure simply mm. because that's more familiar to, to okay. the US um, so definitely I think it, like I've done four or five okay. and people that are developing apps for different reasons mm -hmm. um, and all wanting to register on Apple and they specifically require an LLC. Okay. Um, and then additionally just the LLC because it's uh, governed by a sort of a, the LLC agreement which is similar to a partnership agreement it just gives you a bit more flexibility and the ongoing sort of administration of the company is not so I hate to use the word rigid because it's yeah. important, but um, it's not so sort of mandated. You don't have to hold AGMs right. and resolutions. It gives you much more flexibility to sort of just state how you're going to run your business from the beginning right. and just kind of get on with it. I mean, from a, just listening to what you're saying and the, mm -hmm. the difference, it sounds like for most of the businesses that we serve, at least at BDC, that structure could lend itself to working for them, right? right. So it's giving them that protection mm -hmm. that they may need, um, but it is not requiring them to do as much right. as would be required for a LTD. Right. The only disadvantage to the LLC structure, which I highlight, especially for somebody starting a business and who is conscious of costs, yeah. is that the annual government fee for an LLC is $900 plus the $46 filing fee on okay. an annual basis, whereas an LTD under the Companies Act is only $650 a year plus the $46 filing fee. So you're looking at closer to a thousand a year for an LLC and closer to 700 for a LTD. So whilst $300 is not massive, Mat yeah. if you are if you are conscious about your ongoing costs, that is something to consider. So from from your perspective, seeing <laughs> as you're the one that will have to do the work, um, w w well, I mean, I think you already asked, answered this question, but what would be easier for you to do? <laughs> it's like, let, let's get these in and out. Let's start them off. 
over. No, um, to be honest, either one. And we really do take into consideration what the client's needs are because that is that can dictate predominantly what sort of structure we suggest that they go for. Right. Um, I mean, it's great to have choice now. Before, it was sort of like the partnership right. or the LTD under the Companies Act. And now bringing in the Limited Liability um, Company Act 2016 as open, you know, as creates another opportunity for people. Mm -hmm. So it truly does depend on what you want your business to look like, how you wish it to operate, how many people are going into the business with you, mm -hmm. all sorts of different factors, and then we would make a recommendation. You obviously don't have to take our recommendation. Right, right. <laughs> you can, you know, if you're very, some people are dead set on having one right. structure or the other, um, and you know, we we receive our instructions. So right. whilst we advise you, one might be more well suited for mm -hmm. your business at the end of the day it's ultimately it's the, the their decision. entrepreneur's decision yeah. so they're registered formally mm -hmm. who regulates the, them now right so the two regulators are the bermuda monetary authority and the registrar of companies the bermuda monetary monetary authority or the bma vets the ownership of the entity okay. um, and the proposed business um, the register of companies maintains the bermuda register of companies and all the public files on all local and exempted companies in bermuda along with a list of the directors now and the register of charges um, once the bma May, receives the application and then provides consent to incorporate the entity, mm -hmm. the registrar of companies will complete the registration process and it's at that time that you would pay your annual government fees and your filing fees and the registration fees and then um, and that and it's important to remember that those fees are due to the registrar of companies on the 31st of March every calendar year. Okay, that's where you guys come in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we know that you know you need to identify someone to support you with those registrations. Really quickly, um, before we go to break, what are the typical costs associated with that? And is there any type of relief for those startup companies that might be interested in doing one of those formations? So costs do vary, depends on what the client's um, requirements are. If we have to go and apply for ministerial consent because you're coming out, you know, you want to do restricted business, that will incur more costs. Mm -hmm. However, um, we typically charge between three and three thousand and three and a half thousand dollars. That includes both our professional fees and all the disbursements that have to be paid to the Registrar of Companies and the BMA. Um, if you are a BD BEDC member and you are referred directly to CHW from the BEDC, we will give you a discount on your incorporation fees. See. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent. That's a great way, I think, to. Um, go to break. Um, but I want to thank you for coming and yeah. sharing, uh, enlightening us, right? Because this is a question that we hear all the time. Absolutely. And so it's, it's great to hear it from your mouth because you're the person that actually has to go through and create these, these different companies. So I want to thank you again for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. Um, and of course, that BDC partnership, I think, is going to help a lot of people. Absolutely. So, yeah. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. <laughs> so, thanks again. This is Mind Your Business. I'm your host, Jamila Lodge. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Make your overseas travel affordable and stress-free by sending your extra items and purchases home by using the Bermuda Post Office Parcel Service. Visit any post office overseas and send your items to your home address. Collect them from your local post office in Bermuda. Save on extra luggage fees, airport customs duties, and courier fees, and track your packages at www.bpo.bm. A message brought to you by the Ministry of Finance. Welcome back to Mind Your Business. I'm your host, Jamila Lodge, and joining me now in the studio is Joyce Hayward. She's a CPA with her own company, Fusion for Business, LLC. Welcome. Thank you. So earlier, we were speaking with Melanie Fullerton. She's an associate with CHW, and we were talking about business formation and the difference between an LLC and LTD. And I've invited you here Thank because you. you have an LLC. Yes. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what the process you went through and why you made that decision. But before we get started, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure, well thank you again for having me, Jamila. I'm Joyce Chesley Hayward, CPA. I'm a CPA, a chartered public accountant here in Bermuda, as well as a CPA from the US. Okay. And I started a business for myself back in 
the states. Okay. So I am a CPA, have a bachelor's degree from Georgetown University, have been working in accounting, starting in public accounting, then banking, and then started my own business, then being here in Bermuda for over 17 years, have been the accountant general, financial controller, okay. and so um, the other hat is I'm a reverend as well, so uh -oh. I just try to, to keep that work-life balance, yeah. but do what I enjoy doing. Okay, so, yeah. and accounting is that? It is, okay. it is actually, believe it or not. <laughs> Look, every time someone says that to me, I'm like, thank God for people like that, yourself. That's right, that's right, somebody's gotta do <laughs> somebody's it. Somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> All right, well, you're very accomplished, so I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. Um, so why did you decide, after wearing all of those hats, why did you decide to start your own business? Well, it's picking up from where I left off. In the States, I had a business for over 10 years. After I'd been in banking and in auditing and mm -hmm. working as a private banker, I found that I in the states had a niche for helping small and medium-sized businesses. I did a lot of work with the Small Business Administration and helping okay. people get loans and helping structure loans for companies. And I found that that as an accountant I could help people who came in with the shoe boxes and didn't yes. know what to do. <laughs> as a banker I had to help them put their information together and I really enjoyed helping them. Okay. Analyzing the numbers and knowing how to help them move to that next level or help them go to where they wanted to go. So coming here to Bermuda I, you know, said I was going. I was going to work a as a nine to five job yeah. and be a wife yeah. as when I moved here. Which you know, quickly that you know, accountants hardly ever work nine to five. Right. So, um, but the entrepreneurial bug has always been in me, and people will always ask me questions and ask me to help them with things. And as I went through the working for other people, yeah. the bug just kept biting. And so okay. I finally said, you know what? Let me do what. I feel like God is calling me to do and help people. Right. And I really found that that's where my niche is, that that's what I like to do. And so here I am with my own business again. All right, well, we're grateful. You know, you're supporting <laughs> us. So Absolutely. we are we're, are grateful for that. Yes. Grateful that the bug kept biting. Yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about why you decided to make your business an LLC. Because when you started your business, you started as a sole proprietor, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. When I started, I wanted to get going. Okay. I wanted to get started with people that wanted my help. But as I did more reading and looked at what was available, I knew that the best business structure is a corporation or something that your assets, as Melanie mm -hmm. said earlier, are safeguarded. Right. And because I plan to and I'm doing business both in the U.S. and here in Bermuda, I wanted to find a structure that would work best for me. And I found that the LLC, being a new entity, right. was easy to set up. It worked well for sole proprietors. You didn't have to have all the corporate documents and right. stock and right. all of that kind of thing. And I really did want something that would safeguard me and my assets. And it's good for tax as well. Perfect. For right. Yes. For the for US. US. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think what Melanie mentioned er earlier as well was that it seems like the structure is something that's familiar to companies that exactly. are in the US. So exactly. if you're trying to work and if you have an existing US company, yes. it's like apples to apples versus for apples sure. to oranges. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Were there any challenges that you experienced when you were trying to register your LLC. Well, it's interesting. I had to do some, some research and I did check with a couple of lawyers just to find out, you know, is there something I'm missing? Because right, it seems right. a bit easy. <laughs> right. And they were like, well, it's set up so that people, so that it's easier for local companies to set up. Right. And so I would say the main thing was I had to register with the BMA mm -hmm. and uh, become a registered agent to be able to incorporate a business. Okay. And then with, with the registrar companies, they were very gracious in answering questions to make sure that I did what needed to be done. But reading through the legislation, it was very simple. The forms were very simple. And so it, there didn't seem to be any impediments to getting it done. So let me just make sure our viewers understand. Yes. Because you're a CPA or you're an accountant, you are like a registered CSA, a service provider that can yes. register LLCs and LTDs with the BMA. Yes. Right? Yes. LLCs. Oh. Yes. Okay. LLCs. Yes. Okay. So when you you had to do a separate registration to get permission to be able to do that. Correct. Okay. Yes. yes. So you actually registered your own LLC. I did. I did. Boop. Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> so yes. since you're now able to do that, how long did it take you to go through that process? Well, it really, the I had to make some decisions, so it took a little bit of time to actually decide that I was going to do it. But the actual process really took about three or four days. Okay. However, I will say uh, there was some question, because it is new, mm -hmm. the, be, uh, the people at the registrar of companies thought that I needed to advertise. As Melanie okay. mentioned that you don't have to yes, advertise. Right. Well, they said I did. So I went ahead and did it just so there wouldn't be any concern. So that was seven days where you require okay. to advertise for you know the week before you register. And then I registered. And the process with the BMA and the ROC, or, you know, the register. Bermuda Mon Monetary yeah. Authority and the Registrar of Companies, took about two or three days. Okay. So it was a week or two, really. All right. Well, that I mean, that's good to know. Cause, and I, it's new, right? She said it yes. was 2016. Yes. And so... Um, whereas maybe international companies were familiar with the structure, right. I think local companies are now yeah, getting yes. the are, are understanding that this is an option right. for them, right? right? And so the providers too have to get used exactly. to the fact that, and you know, so as they start seeing more LLCs, I'm sure they won't require that you know there exactly. be a uh, the a listing, yes. yeah, the advertising for which sure. kind of um, lengthens that process, right? Right. So. Because you were registered to do your own LLC, did you need or get any support from legal firms or anything like that? Not in the actual registration process. Okay. I actually um, looked through the, the legislation mm -hmm. and made sure with the registrar companies that the forms that were required, which were just two, right. were satisfactory. And they give you actually the template in the legislation. Okay. So, um, but I will say I did check with lawyers, friends of mine, just mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, the LLC was the right thing for me to do. Right. And in the advice they gave me, that was, yeah, that, you know, that's a good thing. And, right. and so, but I pretty much was able to do it myself. Okay. Yes. Well, hey, that saved a little bit more. It sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and as, did. You know, as a startup business, despite the industry, that's still important, yes, right? You know, absolutely. you try to look for those savings wherever you can. For sure. For so, sure. From your experience, right, we talked a little bit about why yes. companies should um, register LLCs. Are there any additional benefits to you, you think, from having registered L as an LLC, or do you foresee there being, being any benefits? I think that it just gives more credibility to you mm, as okay. as well, but also, as was said, it safeguards your assets. So, right. hypothetically, nothing will happen yeah. prayer. But if someone were to say, "Oh, you know," because I plan to do a lot of public speaking and consulting and 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 around the world, hopefully, but definitely in the U.S. here, Canada the Caribbean. So if persons were to say, oh, I took your advice and, and now you know, look. yes, if I didn't become rich, I didn't <laughs> right, become wealthy, right. as you said, you know, you could help me and I will, but you know, that, but th that safeguards me, my husband, my house, yeah. you know, our assets. So yeah. I look that, I look forward to the LLC designation being able to make sure that as I do business that I'm doing business at arm's length, so to speak, right. that it's with the company as, as, and not necessarily with myself right. individually. And one of the things that we were chatting with as we um, switched over from Melanie to you is she mentioned that some people will go through the process of incorporating their company as an LLC or an LTD, yes. but still enter into agreements in their personal name. Right, right. And Which kind of is... Negates the process. It negates yes. the process. Yes. So yes. Um, I, th I think that's a great point to, to make because, yes. again, the whole point Yes. of doing it is to create that separation, separation. exactly, um, and exactly. to protect your assets. So I definitely think that as people are considering, as the viewers um, anticipate whether or not they're going to do this, yes. that if you do it, use it. Exactly. And I will say the other thing I should have mentioned is at some point I'm planning to expand and okay. have employees or maybe other persons join. So the LLC seemed to be an organization as well or a structure that would allow me to bring in other members. I can still be the primary member or the founding member. Mm. Um, I can have employees that are responsible to the corporation instead of to myself. So right. it also gives that, that structure, gives that benefit as well of being able to be flexible. Right. And then going back to liability, you know, exactly. you help people behave properly. Exactly. But exactly. You just never know. You'd be like, I don't know how your mama raised you, but you can't carry on like, like that. that. Yes, that's be right. With fusion for business, yes. won't accept it. Because <laughs> it, it gets, it's exactly. extended to you, right? Exactly. So exactly. Um, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. So from, from an administration standpoint, Melanie did speak a little bit about the fact that, you know, there's all these memorandum of associations and bylaws and um, certificate of incorporations for a LTD. Right. right. Um, but 
it doesn't seem like there's as much administration exactly. from an LLC. Did exactly. you find I that? I definitely found that, that it was basically the certificate of formation and then the the LLC agreement. Right. And that was it. Okay. Yes. Yes. See, and then and she, you do have to do an annual return as well. So okay. actually when you file, you, you file an annual return. But, and you do that annually. Right. Um, so, but it's very simple, very simple process. So from a cost perspective, um, Melanie mentioned the fact that an LTD, in terms of what that initial cost that you have yes. to pay, is less expensive right. than an LLC. Right. So I guess cost wasn't a huge issue, or in terms of the, the a long-term cost? That's what I looked at. The okay. long-term cost with doing the various documentation for mm -hmm. an LTD and having the board of directors and the various things that that would require. I And with my doing business in the U.S., I thought that the LLC would make more sense for right. me. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing this for the benefit of the viewers. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully some of them are moved or yes. um, find the information that you shared helpful. What if there's someone who's watching who's still kind of on the fence about whether or not they should do this? What would you say to try and convince them either one way or the other? I would say to definitely look at the legislation, come to BEDC and yeah. get some information. Mm -hmm check with a lawyer, you know, just especially if you have friends who are lawyers yeah. so that it doesn't, you know, it's, it costs too, too much because you just get some, do some fact finding. Right. But I would say that it definitely makes sense to incorporate that, that there's a book called Ink and Go Rich. Okay. That, you know, there really is, there are safeguards, as Melanie mentioned, based on the type of business you're in, but there are safeguards to incorporating. So I would say to definitely think about incorporating, but it does really depend on what you plan to do, how long right. you plan to be in business and so forth and and but it get, does give a legacy as well that if That's it's something that point. you plan to do or have your family have a mm -hmm. family business it really makes sense to think of structuring something that can live in perpetuity because the business lasts even if you don't right so when when you go out of business or when you pass away that business can continue on because it's an entity in and of it itself right. so it's something to, to definitely think about but I would say get advice and yeah. make sure that it's the, the thing the for right you, thing for you. Yeah. Excellent. Why, well, thank you very much, Joyce. You're welcome. Thank you again. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing your experience, and hopefully um, your experience will help someone who may not have um, known why they should. Exactly. Um, but you, you've given us some good information, so I'm grateful, and thank you again for coming out. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you for joining us today on Mind Your Business. If you have questions, contact the BEDC at 292-5570 or email us at info at BEDC.BM. And remember, if you don't mind your business, who will? I'm Jamila Lodge and thanks for joining us.